Morning boys. Hey, I've been watching some of you guys uh, making trot lines on uh, YouTube. Uh, boys, <laughs> I think you guys are going to way too much trouble to make trot lines. So I'm going to show you how I've been doing it and my family's been doing it for over a hundred years. Uh, we're going to got a little candle here and we're going to make our staging, which is what you, some of you boys call drop lines. So, get this candle started. And, as you see, I've got it marked off here. I'm going to be making this in real time. Uh, let's get this thing here. And you boys be paying attention because I'm going to go quick. I don't know about you boys, but... Uh, the bite right now here in Iowa is on a little on the slow side. Uh, we got another hundred year flood. It seems like we have one of them about every three or four months here in Iowa. Now guys, this is what we've been calling staging line uh, for a long time. Uh, I'm not sure when they come up with the idea of calling them drop. I can see that, but I've been told my whole life that this is staging. And since this is my video and my line, we're going to call it staging. So, there you go guys. I don't know how many we got there, but... Now if you notice guys, on every one of these, I make sure that the line here doesn't have a big glob of nylon. Just because uh, to be able to, to fit that into the eye of the, the hook. Now guys, there's lots of different options for you on hooks. Uh, I'm, those circle hooks are starting to grow on me a little. Uh, I like those, but there's another hook that uh, I like probably as much as the J-hook or the circle hook for trot lines. And that's those wide gap hooks. And a little later, uh, I'm going to show you that. Okay, guys. Uh, we are about done there with our staging. So here's my main line. Uh, this is considerably heavier. About uh, probably as twice as uh, my staging line. And uh, a lot of the times... I'll have this about uh, oh, four to five lengths before I start my um, where I'm going to start putting my hooks. Now, guys, I'm going to show you how to do this the easiest way. And this, you just take your staging line, you make a knot at the end and you want it down to pretty close to the bottom that's really pretty good now I'm going to put this through here I'm going to pull it tight okay you can see it's on there and now this is where the magic takes place you just pull it and there it is guys that staging uh, your drop line tied to your main line uh, it's there forever. Now, I'm going to run a few more of these. Now, probably a little bit out of the eyesight that uh, I have the, the table marked out uh, where uh, the, the difference, the distance between the two different, uh, uh, where one line starts and the other one begins. You see, guys, I just bring that in there, get it pretty close and tight. There you go. There's no drop shot. There's no anything on there. And guys, uh, I've been doing this uh, for, that started with actually commercial fishing was my very first job I ever had in my whole life. That uh, other than digging fish worms for my neighbor when I was three and selling them to him for a penny. So he would never have an excuse that he didn't have bait to take me fishing when I was a boy. Uh, the guys, I've given that a lot of thought of the people who have 
uh, spent time with me in the woods, teaching me the, the old ways. And uh, when I think back to that, that man that took me fishing, uh, I can't say every day, but pretty close, that he, why a man would go out of his way to take a three-year-old fishing in a rowboat on the Mississippi. Um, man, that's some tough duty in volunteering for it. Um, actually, I, I kind of call him a superhero to me. That uh, he'd take me fishing, walk me over to the dam, and between uh, him and uh, his dog, Brownie, they entertained me for the first few years of my life and gave me a, a good start in this fishing business. We uh, had uh, two fish markets when I was growing up. And uh, my dad had this point that if you ate at his table, you helped put food on the table. And, I, and he didn't care how old you was. And uh, I've always appreciated that, that I could uh, handle myself when it comes to cleaning fish or butchering it uh, in the winter on the hogs. And then grew up into packing in a few deer. And uh, that's one of the things I could do as well as the older gentleman in my family. And uh, I use the term gentleman loosely because those guys that I learned from, uh, they were hard men and you, you learned at an early age you didn't want to disappoint them. Now guys, you see, I'm just putting a knot on the end of my staging. And this here um, method is, uh, I think, the best that I've used. And if it works for me here in Iowa, it's going to work for you boys. Uh, I don't care where you're at. Now, a lot of times uh, when I was making these up uh, in the hundreds, uh, at I started commercial fishing when I was fishing uh, for fish to sell at about 10. Uh, I didn't take over the family operation of running trot lines and baskets and small hoop nets until I was about 13. And I would always tie, cut my staging, and I, at the same time I would uh, tie my hooks on uh, with the same exact knot. Now, the reason I'm not tying hooks on here is because I don't want to leave a, a hook in the house where it might get my wife caught or my uh, or cat, and I would never hear the end of it <laughs> if that happened. So, uh, but that's how I would do it. I would uh, put my knot on, put it in a uh, glass, and hook it on. Uh, we'll be doing this out in the shop in just a little later. So. Uh, guys, I think you got a pretty good handle on, I don't know how many we tied up here. Let me count them on my regular fishing license. I'm only allowed to have 15 hooks per trot line. And I'm only allowed to have a five totaling 75 hooks. Now I could get a permit to uh, on a sportsman's license and to fish uh, 50 hook lines up to 200 hooks, but uh, for my needs, uh, just going out catching something uh, in the fall like that's coming up, put a little fish in the freezer. Uh, that's all I need. Plus, when we're doing our, our fishing video, it's kind of nice to, to know what depth the, the fish are, are working and on what baits. Uh, within three lines, I could cover quite a bit of ground, and I could have uh, uh, bluegills on one, cut bait, and I could have uh, live bluegills and uh, the worms. Now, guys, 
when we fished and when I fished commercially with trot lines, the number two bait I always used, and that was uh, soft shell crawdads and uh, worms. If uh, for trot lines, trying to catch uh, what, what we call fiddlers or uh, shorts that uh, or just a little short of legal size. Now, my dad never really paid a whole lot of attention to uh, fishing rules and regulations and stuff, so, uh, but uh, as an adult, uh, I damn sure do, and uh, being a retired law enforcement, that would not look good for me to be violating uh, game and fish laws. And I ain't going to do that. If I can't do it legal, I ain't going to do it at all. Now, guys, you can see that this is going awfully fast. Um, I have no idea why somebody would want to go and buy trot lines from Walmart or, or whatever. Uh, when you can make them yourself, they're, they're made well, and they work great. Uh, now, I can see you that, that uh, if you don't know how to do that and you want to try it, fishing for trout line, then you might want to, but this guy, this is going so, so easy that, um, well, I'm just going to show you the way, and you guys can decide if it's the way for you or not, so, there you go, guys, 15 hook line, uh, I'm going to add three lengths, before now guys if you hunt fish trap and you don't have one of these babies in your tackle box in your four-wheel drive your quad your boat you are missing the point this is a cigarette lighter on steroids one time, all it takes. Now, guys, when I was a professional guide and outfitter, uh, I was caught between a rock and a hard place uh, a number of times, and I damn sure wish I had one of these where I could start me a fire quick and easy. If you can't build a fire with this and a little starter, uh, you've got a problem. And if you don't get sink a boat, on the 28th day of November, like I did once in the airboat, when trapping, you're going to wish you had one of those. Now guys, this is uh, another really good idea. This is not my idea. This is a, an idea that I picked up from a guy that was watching, I was watching him make trout lunch. Just to see what kind of different ways other people do around the, the country. And he put a float at the end of, of both of his trot lines and I thought that was such a good idea uh, I'm going to start doing that myself and I want to keep this thing on here I'm going to tie uh, a knot here I like a staging knot and that is on there. Now I could do the same here and gee whiz, I think just for sake of argument I want to do that here too. Now the reason he did it is that if you would drop this line into the end if it not tied on to your, uh, your brick or your rock or your piece of metal uh, you always will be able to find it uh, on the end. Besides it's bright and, uh, boy, guys, I think it's a great idea. That's the best idea I've ever had. So, there you go, guys. That is the quick way of making trot lines. Um, this is the, the line I've always used uh, my whole life. I fished uh, when I was a boy in my, my teens up to I was uh, 22 uh, and got married. Uh, this is how I did it. Guys, I made, uh, I fished anywhere from 800 hooks to 1,000 hooks every day. 
and this is how I did it. It was quick, it was easy, and it did a, a great job. So that's it. I'm going to stop it there. But now, guys, I'm going to move the camera, and I'm going to show you on slow motion how I tie the staging uh, knot on your main line. So, guys, we'll talk in just a little while, and wherever you are, I sure hope the fish are biting because they ain't biting here. <laughs> we'll catch up with you in just a little. Go oh, it's going. I'll take me a little while to get set up. Well, guys, uh, we, we got the... The camera set on slow motion and i'm just going to walk through this with you a, or a couple more times uh, heck we don't got any better thing to do because the fish ain't biting because it's damn flood don't want to harp on it but doggone i'd like to get out on the river start catching some of those fall flatheads and catfish so here we go we, we got a, a, a knot here on our staging line and we're going to pull it up nice and pretty you never know, game warden might want to come and check my line, and I want to look good. Yeah, I got a reputation to maintain. And you just go ahead and put your your finger around. Come on now, one more time. Here we go. And you're just going to go ahead, and you got a, a loop there. And one more loop, just to make sure you all got that. Now I stick my thumb and index finger, grab the line underneath and I just pull on it that's it boys I mean uh, it's not rocket science a good thing because back when I was taught uh, this line there was anything called rocket science unless it was science fiction and we're just going to pull on the, the main line and uh, get it kind of close but not 100% necessary and just go ahead and pull and uh, come on now, pull the main line. Come on. And oh, there was the magic. Guys, that line, staging drop line is attached to your main line and it's there forever. But uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and do this just one more time. Again, you're going to pick up your line. Wrap around the finger, just like that. And you stick your finger and thumb under, grab the line, and pull. There you go, come on, one more, a little more. A little more. There. Then you go ahead and you get your staging uh, line. It's going to put an, another knot there at the end. And uh, boy, this, this old geezer kind of moving slow. But we're going to go ahead and show you one more time. We're going to, oops, got to get it through the loop there. I know. And. Uh, Hell, pretty soon I'll be talking to myself. <laughs> We're going to pull this up. We're going to pull it down. And then, come on now, pull the line. Just like Daddy taught you. Come on, pull. Magic about to happen. There you go, guys. That's how you attach your staging line, drop line, to your main line, inner trot line. So there you go, guys. I'm going to leave it uh, for now, and uh, good luck, and uh, I hope the fish are biting where you're at. Later, gentlemen.